First of all, the good people of St. Anthony Parish, from the bottom of my heart, a most uh, joyous wish and, and congratulations on this centenary of this parish family, 100 years. This is truly an occasion for you to celebrate with great joy, with great solemnity. It's worthy and proper that you celebrate this anniversary of your parish life and family. Jesus tells us in the gospel today that we are the salt of the earth, that we are the light of the world. And what you as a parish family have been doing now for 100 years in this community of Wem is doing just that, being the salt, being light to your neighbors, witnessing your love for God so that others may see the good works that you do and give glory to God, our Heavenly Father. And so it is proper and right that you take a moment, that you, you pause for a moment to celebrate the past, to celebrate the lives and the witness of those who have gone before you. And some of you have been around for a good portion of that 100 years. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. <laughs> Think of all of the good pastors who have gone before your current pastor, Father Boyle, who have shepherded you and led you in the ways of the Lord Jesus, teaching you, nourishing you with the grace of the sacraments. Think of all of the lay men and women, parish leaders, all those who have gone before you and upon whose shoulders you stand. They laid the foundation of this parish family. And you owe a great debt of gratitude to those who have gone before you and who have handed on to you not only the gift of faith itself, but this strong, vibrant parish community of faith. And so celebrate the past. And it's good to reflect on that today. However, the occasion of a parish celebration and anniversary such as this, especially one of such magnitude, a centenary, a centennial, should not simply be an opportunity to celebrate the past, to reflect on the past and to give thanks to Almighty God for the past, as much as that is part of what you do today. Rather, a parish celebration of a centennial should also be a moment to look forward to the future. Having reflected on the past, using it only as a springboard into the future. Because the work of this parish community is far from over, is far from finished. You have accomplished much in your 100 year history, but the Lord is not finished yet doing his work here in the community of Gwen. He has much more to do, and he is counting on you and your children and your grandchildren and great-grandchildren and so on to carry on the work of proclaiming and living the gospel of Jesus Christ in our Catholic faith. And so today we dedicate yourselves to that mission which is entrusted to you by Jesus Christ as a parish family of the Catholic Church. You know, it's appropriate, I think, that as we celebrate this centennial, as we celebrate your past, as we look forward to the future, 
And as we look for that work of the new evangelization, in which you as a parish family will play an important part, that you do so under the patronage of St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony is a doctor of the church. And what does it mean when the church designates one of her saints as a doctor of the church? What the church does then is hold up that individual saint as one whose teaching is reliable, as a sound and strong expression of our Catholic faith, and whose, whose teaching then can be relied on to guide us, truly orthodox teaching, the true teaching of Jesus Christ in the Gospels and in the tradition of the Church. Because as we move forward from here, we do so under this new uh, umbrella, if you will, of that new evangelization, in which you must play an active role in proclaiming the once for all truth of Christ, the once for all truth of the gospel. And you do so under the patronage and care of a doctor of the church, St. Anthony. And might I mention that all of us in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan also march forward into this work of the new evangelization under the watchful care relying on the intercession of our first bishop, now, the Venerable Frederick Barrett. And one thing I want to really emphasize with all of you today, as you celebrate your past, but perhaps as more importantly, as you look to your future, that this is a decisive moment in the life of God's church. We hear St. Paul in his words to Timothy. Timothy, who was one of the earliest bishops of the church, Timothy's feast, he is celebrated as a bishop, one of the successors to the apostles, in this case, St. Paul. And St. Paul urges Timothy to be about the work of proclaiming and teaching the gospel to be an evangelist. And he says, do so sort of in season and out of season, when it's convenient and when it's inconvenient. And I think we are at a stage in the life and the history of the church where we, my dear brothers and sisters, have to make up our minds. Who are we going to follow? Are we going to follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his sound teaching for the sake of our salvation? Or are we going to be evangelized, if you will, by the world and by the culture in which we live, that in many ways is so inimical to the gospel, that teaches a different message, a different gospel? St. Paul warns Timothy, and isn't this interesting? You know, this is in the very earliest days of the church. This is in the age of the apostles themselves that St. Paul has to warn Timothy. Timothy, be careful because there will be those who will no longer tolerate sound teaching, sound doctrine. But their ears will get itchy for myths, kind of creating their own teaching formulating their own gospel message. Beware, Timothy. Remain steadfast in the gospel that you have heard proclaimed, and proclaim it to be an evangelist. I'm afraid, my brothers and sisters, we're living in an age when many will no longer tolerate sound doctrine, will no longer, in humility, and in faith, submit themselves to the revelation which God has given us in Jesus Christ, in the scriptures, and in the living tradition of the church. Rather, our ears get itchy for the easier way. 
And we must remain steadfast, as you and your ancestors have done. I believe more and more each day, and I've just come back from the June spring meeting of the U.S. Bishops Conference, the bishops in the United States gathered together for a discussion, for business, for prayer, reflecting deeply on the work of the new evangelization and the challenges that are before us as a church today, and the challenges that we are facing today to our religious liberty and freedom to proclaim our faith, to live our faith, not just in our houses of worship, but there, out there through the doors of this church, in the marketplace, in the world, to be alive in our faith and to be able to have the freedom to live and proclaim it. I am more and more convinced that this is indeed a decisive moment for us. We have to decide. Who do we follow? Who is our shepherd? Our shepherd is Jesus Christ. It is he who leads us and who has led this parish community for these 100 years. And Jesus teaches us, he leads us, he shepherds us to his church, of which you are living members, living stones in the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is the church, the body of Christ. Jesus is present among us, teaching us, sanctifying us, shepherding and leading us in the ways of life and salvation in and through his church. This we must hold fast to. Further, as we go into this work of the new evangelization, which you will start hearing a lot more about in the days to come, in the months to come, in the years to come. I have asked the church in the Diocese of Marquette, and that includes St. Anthony's Parish and the mission in Northland as well, to join together this great work of the new evangelization, to step forward in faith into this new millennium, and to be united as one in this effort. Not to separate Jesus from the work and the mission of the church. You cannot. Cardinal Dolan, Archbishop of New York and the president of our Bishops Conference pointed out that what many people want today is Christ without his church. And you can't have Christ without his church because Jesus and his church are one. Inseparable. And so we need to be united. The more we are united in this great work of living and proclaiming the gospel to the future, the more effective we will be with God's help and grace in furthering the mission of the church. I'm calling the church to this work in the Diocese of Marquette quite honestly because I'll be very self-revealing. I am tired of being in maintenance mode. And doesn't it feel like it sometimes? Especially as this church in the Upper Peninsula where we see declining population, where we just see you know, the suffering of the economic situation we're in, where we see parish registrations go down, mass attendance go down, our young people, numbers of them going down. It feels like sometimes we're trying to hold on to what we have, maintain what we have. And I'm tired of being in that mode. And I'm tired of being, you know, cowered by all of the negativity that we hear in and about the church, in the culture in which we find ourselves. It's time for us to get out of maintenance mode and get into the mode of mission. The mission that is given us by Jesus Christ to proclaim the truth of the gospel and to live it boldly 
with faith, with hope, and with great love. Now is the time, a decisive moment for all of us, but particularly for a parish as it celebrates its 100th anniversary. And so I ask all of you good people today, and through you, to those that aren't able to be here today, to rededicate yourselves today to your faith in Christ, to your faith in living that faith in Christ in the church, and that through your lives, you will be salt seasoning this community with the presence of Jesus Christ. That you will be a light, a light shining in the darkness, leading others like a beacon, like a lighthouse, to the place of refuge and salvation and life in Christ Jesus the Lord. And so, my dear friends, again, Congratulations. But your work is just beginning. God bless you.